This is something that we do every day on the web. Select some text in a web page. And um, the web annotation standard defines a few different ways to represent that selection. The way Hypothesis does it, we use a few different selectors to ensure that um, the annotation target is resilient to change. I want you to particularly focus, though, on uh, the part where it says start and end. Right? That's something we just take for granted. Of course, a selection has a beginning and an end. How could it not? Um, an annotation like this gives you a kind of a URL, uh, and the URL points to the selection in the document. Um, <clears throat> the W3C have thought about this. This URL in and of itself is not a standard. It's how Hypothesis does it. We use an ID to refer to the URL plus the combination of selectors. Um, the W3C have thought about doing this in an in actual standard way. So this would be uh, potentially the standard way to represent an annotation that points to a selection in a document. So it's the URL plus the selectors as a URL. Um, in any case, point is, we're moving into a world where selections in documents or web resources have their own individual URLs, okay? So uh, let's look again at this quote from Nancy Pelosi. Um, that's not something she wrote. It's something she said. It's something she said in a video uh, at the Peter G. Peterson Fiscal Summit that was transcribed by some reporter and quoted and eventually uh, fact-checked by PolitiFact. So um, I asked if there was a transcript that I could find. Um, I didn't come up with anything for a transcript better than, this is just a dump of YouTube captions. So that's one way we could get at the text of this document. Um, but of course, we don't have transcriptions for an awful lot of web audio and video. Um, that might be because it's text, it's, it's speech that never was transcribed, but a lot of it's not speech, right? A lot of it is, you know, it's uh, silent moving pictures or it's music. There's tons of audio and video out there that is never going to be able to be transcribed. Um, once you've got a selection in media, there are some good ways to represent it as a URL. So this is uh, a YouTube way of doing it. The YouTube uh, embed syntax gives you the ability to say it starts and ends at this point and this point. Um, the more standard way to do this kind of thing nowadays is with what's called a media fragment URL. Um, and the uh, fragment syntax, again, gives you a, a time that it starts and a time that it stops. You can use this with uh, file types like MP3 and MP4. Um, the harder problem here actually turns out to be making the selection in the first place. So, uh, so here I am uh, in that video and I'm attempting to select the statement that Nancy Pelosi made and that was transcribed. So um, this is not a fun or easy process. YouTube gives you the starting point. You can say capture uh, the video URL at the current point, but you need to complete the selection with the end time, and that's not such an easy thing to get to, right? So you're scrubbing around on the video, trying to get to the end of the thing, um, and uh, you know, then, well, you actually wanna kinda check and see that you got it right, so that's another bit of fiddling around, and then uh, you might need to trans transcribe the time code from, you know, I don't know, seconds to minutes and seconds, or going the other way, and then take that and tack it onto the URL that YouTube gave you, so you have a complete media fragment URL with a start and a stop. And um, it, it's just a ridiculous hassle, which is why this kind of thing doesn't happen um, nearly as often as, uh, as it ought to. So it's really weird, actually, when you think about it, that something so fundamental is missing from the web, right? You, you can't make a selection in the standard web media player. You just can't do it. Um, we've made uh, some progress since, you know, the media player landscape looked like this about 15 years ago, right? So we, some of us remember all of these fondly. Um, and, uh, you know, it was actually the same then, right? So, so nothing's really changed. I mean, you couldn't make a selection in Windows Media Player or Real Player either. Um, you know, where we have made progress is this. 
right? So, so thank God we finally have a standard media player and it, it is rendered in different ways in the different browsers, but it's the HTML5 standard media player. And this is great, you know, the convergence on a common player is a wonderful bit of progress. But you still can't make a selection, which is crazy. So um, I wrote a tool that wraps a selection interface around the standard media player. Uh, it works with MP3s, MP4s, and YouTube videos. Unlike the standard player, which has just a single-handled slider, this thing has a two-handled slider, which is kind of obviously what you need in order to be able to manipulate the beginning and the end of something. Um, so you can drag these handles to set the start and stop. You can nudge uh, forward and backward by minutes and seconds. Um, and, and when you think you've got the clip that you're looking for, you can preview the beginning and the end. So play a couple seconds at the beginning, a couple seconds at the end to check that I've captured the thing that I want. Um, and when you're done, you get um, a, a player URL. So it could be uh, a YouTube URL with the start and stop code like we saw, which if I hand that URL to you and you play it, it'll play the selection, start to stop. Or it might be a media fragment URL on an MP3 or an MP4. Same deal. I give you the, the URL, the thing plays, and stops. So you've got an exact quote, right? Um, so what does this have to do with annotation? Um, there are a couple of ways. And the way I've, I've been talking about this is that you can do two things, generally speaking. You can annotate with media, and you can annotate on media. So um, here's an example of what I mean by annotating with media. Um, I've now selected uh, the text of uh, the quote in a web page, and the annotation that I'm attaching to that text selection is the media quote that I've established in the way that I just showed you. Uh, so um, what happens in this case with Hypothesis is when I embed that media fragment link into the body of the annotation, the client turns it into a media player um, thanks to a code contribution from Steel Wagstaff, who's uh, sitting right here. Thank you, Steel. Um, and, and the media quote will play, start to stop, in the annotation that's anchored to the text selection. So that's what I mean by annotating with a media quote. Um, and here's a, a sort of the inverse of that, which is uh, annotating on media. So here now I'm in the browser, and I've got that media fragment URL in the browser, so the browser is set up to play the thing. Uh, start to stop. Um, so in this case, um, I can use a feature of Hypothesis called a page note, right? So Hypothesis has two modes. There's a mode where you make a selection, and the annotation that you make is targeting that selection. Um, or you can refer to the, just the page that you're on, which in this case is a web resource that encapsulates the selection, because you've already made the selection, and the selection is represented in the URL. So here, uh, I can make an annotation that refers to that particular media quote and anchor it to the quote. Um, so uh, this tool is a handy way to produce these media fragment URLs. Um, it's really fiddly to do otherwise. Um, it, um, look, I hope someone will come up with a better one than I have. Uh, this is just a, you know, yet another prototype from John. Um, but, um, but the real point is that um, this, this whole idea needs to go away, right? Um, you know, it's, it's begging to be made obsolete um, because what really needs to happen is that making a selection in media needs to be as easy and natural an operation on the web as making a selection in text always has been. Um, let's hope we get there in the next 15 years. <laughs> Thanks.